basically there's an Instagram story that went up and people, someone asked, what's your goals for 2024? And I said to play football interstate. And then someone replied, you should play in Darwin. Airport just got here. Feeling good, feeling good. It's about a, an hour and a half from our flight. It's so about five or six hours till we get done. Craig McRae always says, Take the stairs. That's how we won a premiership. Is Craig McRae carrying a 30 kilogram bag around with him everywhere though? Because I'm carrying like 30 kilogram bag on my stomach and my 30 kilogram bag. On my that is true, that is true. Craig McRae looks in good shape. Davis Jarrell. Well, so my first issue was that I had packed pretty heavy on my carry-on. Um, I had a couple bags of chips as well. So I had a jumper around me, like over my shoulders that I took onto the seat, which means when I walked off the plane and it was just like a wave of just hotness. It was just a wave of like, just humidity. It was like wet, sticky, hot. And I was like, all right, this is this is different. And we're in the thick of it at the moment. We've just touched down in Darwin. And how, like when we walked out of the door, it was just like, oh, how do you describe it? Well, the screen's even like weird. Look at the film when I was like, hamstrings are hurt. Jesus, four we, hours. Ago. We we didn't move for four hours. No, I was starving. But I watched I didn't Harry want... Potter, and then I watched um, some movie with Will Smith and the hot bird from Batman or whatever. What's her name? Margot Robbie. Yeah, that's the one. Voldemort needs someone's wand, and he grabs Draco Malfoy's dad, and he doesn't want to give it up, but he gives it up. Oh. Thrilling. Dropped our stuff off at the hotel. We're now going out for dinner. Let's take Mary's hat on. Walking the main streets. Yeah, I got told to not do this. Apparently there was a YouTube vlog that said Darwin's one of the most dangerous places in Australia. I mean Darwin, the capital of the Northern Territory. This is the most dangerous area. I don't see any danger. The most danger we've come across is I almost tripped over a stick. That's the library. It's a Darwin library. Um, I might ring up tomorrow and rent 15 minutes computer time there. That's the Darwin library. I heard really good things about that one too. Checkers wants to play cool mass games. Yeah, no, Darwin library slaps. Uncle Sam's is open. This is the place we got to go to. What's they that? They sell dim sims and chocolate milk. 3.2 kilometers away, 24 hours. You want to go now? Asian takeaway. You want to walk there? Asian takeaway. 24 hours. Where are we? Um, Melbourne. That's just wrong. We're at the we're at the waterfront. They've Melbourne got an inflatable waterfront. world. Yeah. It's humid though, isn't it? Uh, it's very warm. Not warm. It's actually like probably 25. But it's just but it's it thick. Feels thick. So thick. Yeah. Very barley. So many of these. You ready? This is um. I've done about 15 of these. Mustache is getting wet, is it? Yeah, like this pit of my shirt is gonna be drenched by the end of the day. Basically, we're running from Darwin City to our hotel because Czech has thought it'd be a really good idea to run. Czech thought it'd be a really good idea to run home in the 48 degree heat. He's running across the road now. That's the level we're at at the moment. Look at him go. Seriously, a good shake out happening here. Checks is moving. Checks looks good. What's his name? The priest. You don't know. They're the two that stand on top. We were getting shown around the uh, St. Mary's trophy cabinets, and there was a poster on the wall that said they'd won 50 games in a row, which obviously had spanned across a few seasons. 
being roughly 20 games a season. So I'm assuming that's about three years of football that they had not lost a game. And in that post, it was Vic Ludwig um, as a team manager. They had Noel Long, who was showing us through the club room. Michael Long was in the poster as well, and he came through and um, showed us some stuff. So just like having those guys there show us around the room and then also see them in, in a lot of the photos and and the premiership photos that are up on the wall was a bit of, bit of a surreal experience. That was probably the best experience that I've had, um, not even just controlled to footy, but I'm thinking outside of footy, like my life in general. I played with Tim Buddy. Um, Benny Bagana uh, and Ted Lee. Ben, and yeah, Benny Bagana, not so yeah. by the bloody... Selwood. Getting shown around by, by the genuine club legends, the people who built, basically built the club from brick by brick and then obviously the incredible players the incredible families that that all played at the club listening to their stories was seriously like one of the most i'd say like incredible things that you could probably do uh there's um saints open train tonight there's a lot of people here a lot of teams and so many um, i heard you're not gonna get selected i uh, doubt it with, a few, a few with this spot. much with this much talent man i got no chance <laughs> yeah um he's coming last in the running drills already <laughs> All right, it is whole club training. There is 200 people out on the track tonight from the under eights all the way through to the senior teams. That is a massive group of people. And that's what local footy is. That is what it looks like. But it was really almost strange to, to rock up to footy training and there's like 15 teams on the field. Because usually, you know, all club training, you might get, you know, the 15s, maybe the under 18s and the seniors. No, this was eight years old to 55 years old this was club footy this was community footy i'm known probably at my old footy club to be someone who doesn't rock up the training but the idea of getting out on uh, tio stadium number two meeting all these new faces meeting my new teammates um in darwin was uh, pretty exciting and i was actually a little bit pumped heading to this one we got uh, we, we kicked things off by integrating the juniors doing uh, drills as an entire club. So there was uh, five stations and we sort of rotated around the stations. We ran a drill and obviously we wanted a drill that was super easy. What's, a, what's, what's the most common drill at every footy club? A five-star handball. And you know we did that. We did the five-star handball. Checkers still can't kick, but he was trying to teach people. It was great. Then we split up. We split up into our teams that we were playing with. We got to meet our actual teammates training with the senior men, and this is where things started to get a bit serious. We're having a bit of a muck around with the kids, kicking a few goals and the fives are handball. We're, we're doing lane kicking here, and my first initial reaction, the first thing I realized, don't touch anyone's hand. Don't don't high five people. When you come into the end of drills, you normally high five all your teammates, but my hand was just dripping in sweat. It's every time you touch someone, every time you tackle someone, you almost need to tear yourself down because everyone is just dripping in sweat. Even though it might not look like it, we're not working that hard, but it is pouring out of us. Um, we're hitting targets, playing well, and I was like, oh, I feel comfortable here. I feel somewhat comfortable. And then the coach came and said, hey, guys, we're getting some physicality in here. And I said, oh, no, thank you. I said, I'm going to stay on the outside. You guys handball it to me, and I'll, and I'll dodge the tackles, run away from the contact, and, uh, and that's me. All the boys were lovely. The boys were great. They, they were fantastic to get along with, and, and they integrated us in the club so well. So it was actually a lot of fun. And then after training, we headed over to the club rooms. There's a whole club. There was dinner put on, a few, uh, few soft drinks, and uh, there's even a swing pool there. And then we, we had a little competition. All right, we're here at St. Mary's Football Club. First person to kick it in the bin gets a $500 Puma voucher. Are we ready? Yeah! But um, a, a seriously gorgeous night ended in a sunset. And it, look at it, it, just, it looks unreal. Right and early in the morning, 7.20 in the morning, we're here at Mix 104.9, ready to do some radio stuff, um, promote the promote the game, um, hopefully promote the club a little bit, and um, yeah, just get the word out. Oh, 
Put up. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, bro. Oh, yeah. Jack's nice to meet you. Jack's nice to meet you guys. Do you have the boys sitting in the air? Oh, I'm with you. Come on in, bro. One there, are you chatting as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sweet. You can see yeah, us there if you like. I actually didn't know you were coming in either. <laughs> yeah, we went to the whole 100, and I mean, we're sitting in the studio now. We've got these nice microphones, got these nice microphone arms. And I know being Darwin, I don't know what it was, but it was just such a local atmosphere that the microphone you had was falling off its stand, and you had to hold it up with your hands the entire interview. And I know they're moving studios, but it was quite a rundown studio as such it felt like there was sitting in the back room of someone's shed almost just doing this interview on darwin's number one radio station he did a phone interview which is actually my first phone interview obviously we've done i'm sure all of us have done like the zoom podcast or like a in-person interview or something like that phone interview called into sen with uh who actually ended up being our coach raf clark um, his SEN show spoke about the game a little bit more in depth on that sort of our positions how we um, if we're actually any good and I think he was a little bit shocked to hear that we're not very good live on air to the people listening before we get into it look we are it's a football reason you're up for you're going to pull on the mighty St Mary's jumper how would you describe for anyone listening how would you describe your footy careers to this date um, so basically we make videos and social media videos um, and the tagline I guess would be following the pursuit of playing the lowest level of football in Australia um, which I'm sure Raf doesn't want to hear because he somehow managed to get us on his team sheet this week but um, we, yeah the, the pursuit has been just like we play in the Division 12 reserves in Adelaide and now we're up playing Division 1 in Darwin so it's a good good storyline and hopefully we can get a few touches this weekend but yeah normally we're the ones sitting on the bench warming the pine or um yeah our, our main thing we're known for is drinking chocolate milk at half time instead of at the end of the game or tucking into the canteen at half time as well Uh, it's called Nickname Cheeseburger. He's going to interview you. Oh, you yeah, have the best nickname of the club so far. But we need a like, we need a why why cheeseburger. I love the cheeseburger, but I don't know if I like it that much. Uh, just, I don't know, boys. Uh, take the piss. One day, your new name's Cheeseburger. Can we make we make Shrey's nickname some stupid? Like, no, nah, hamburger, hamburger. Make it <laughs> hamburger. Shrey's new nickname is hamburger. Yeah. I'm just getting myself hyped up. It's a big day. It's a fucking it's a big day, man. It's game day. Um, hold on the lenses. It really gets so humid in here and so sweaty. Um, we're going to the Prap Markets, which we heard does good fruit smoothies. Um, so we can get a bit of game day sustenance in. Um, and I believe it should be over here, but I can't see it. I don't know. We'll keep walking. It's definitely the busiest I've seen this place. Yeah. Um, it's warm. Look, it's looking butcher. It's very warm today, very steamy. Um, but that's pretty standard, you know. We're just, just every day is warm. It's a really bad idea to wear tracky pants, like tracky shorts. Yeah, what are you doing there? That's yeah. Uh, it was bad. It was a bad idea. Just sitting on the stairs, eating roti. Now that is the sign of a man who's ready to dominate. Okay. 
right. we're at the ground and the check is has hay fever symptoms and has blisters from the sun all over him. So he's in absolutely ripping form. I actually feel alright. I haven't really eaten anything today, so I'm scared I might run out of fuel or something. So I might go eat something. I need to find a source of the That'd be nice. So we're sitting in the grandstand at TIO Stadium and it's belting hot. There's no, sh there's a little bit of shade cover, but there's no breeze. It's so sweaty. I'm pounding water and it's coming out of me as fast as I'm pounding it. It's just sweating out of me. Drunk like eight liters of water and I've, I've never drank water before a game, but had to just keep smacking water bottles down. Pre-game tea. Check if you with nachos. They actually look really, really good. Oh. A staple Milo is good to check. I've gone with the uh, chicken strips and chips. And I've gone and got a fruit salad with me as well. Uh, just because I don't want to feel too bad. We're about three, four hours away. Three and a, three and a half, four hours away. Four and a half, so we're getting there. Now, I'm not one for pre-game routines or anything like that, but in this moment, I feel like it would have been really good to have one because. I was nervous. It's it's nerve-wracking knowing that, well, one, there's a camera on you, but also, you know, people have, have come out to watch, people are watching online, like, it's, there's, there's a certain amount of pressure that is on this. Rubbing the deep heat in was so funny because I was just dripping in sweat. It wouldn't, it wouldn't go into my skin. Um, it took me 40 minutes to rub that stuff in almost. But we're just trying to kill time. We're just stretching, have a little kick of the footy, get our hands on it. And then an hour before the game, because the the, uh, the other guys were playing on the oval, the, the ones team, we, we headed out to the back oval and went for a little bit of a warm up. I can hear the crowd a little bit, I can hear the siren. I saw the crowd and yeah, it was scary. We sort of get ready, uh, we go out to warm up and it is hot. Like we're warming up and I'm sweating bullets. I'm like, I'm not going to survive. I've had eight litres of water today and it's not going to be enough. It was hot. Like, seriously hot. Uh, there was a trainer out here with us who had about six bottles of water and I reckon I consumed three of them in the four-minute warm-up that we did. Skipper said, boys, let's, let's wrap it up. I'm sure our muscles are warm enough because it's 850 degrees out here. I remember earlier in the day, Raf Clark came up to me and was like, oh, I'll see if I can find a St. Mary's legend to come present you Guernsey before the game. I didn't have it in me to tell him that I've been a St. Kilda fan for 20 years and actually have a Raf Clark match-worn Guernsey hanging above my bed. Um, so him presenting our Guernsey and shaking our hands just absolutely blew my mind. And then we run out in the field uh, and the crowd's cheering and the A-grade's there, guard of honour, and it's go time. Had sat by the pool a little bit um, during the week and stupidly didn't think to wear sunscreen because it's not something we do a lot of in Melbourne. Haven't put sunscreen on all cricket season. Probably not a good thing, but we just haven't been wearing long sleeves and haven't really had any sunny days or overcast. And uh, got myself quite the, the nasty burn and some blisters. So I went out and bought this Impact Armour sleeve um, to wear, under, wear over the top and protect the blisters and the sunburn a bit because the skin was quite tender. Doing the warm-up, obviously the game's getting streamed on the YouTube and the NTFL must have been watching the stream. And have called through to our club, um, St. Mary's, and said, hey, Cherkis has to take his sleeves off. It's not permitted wear. Knew, knew the day was not going to go the way I'd planned as soon as we got that phone call.
Lost the first rock contest. Ball speed at the back. I don't know really what was going on. Just a bit dazed, I guess, from the fact that it was so hot. The sun was in my eyes. I look up and there, uh, there's there's a, one of our players with the ball. He sort of kicked it out in front of me and me being not the fastest man in the world, had to dive for this ball and dived, took a diving mark, which isn't something I normally do. Looked down immediately and knew that my shoulder was going to be in a lot of strife with the amount of sunburn. I thought, geez, that, that stings a little bit. And um, as I looked at it, there's just blood streaming out of the shoulder and all the skin had disappeared off my arm. And was like, that's probably not ideal. The checkers, and he's marked it. What a diving mark. He's taking a diving mark and I'm like, I look around and I've got 10 meters of space at least. I'm like, checkers is going to hit me if I call out enough. So I'm yelling, checkers, checkers, checkers. And he's just on the ground, just laying there. What a diving mark there by checkers. He's just on the ground. Back. Just would not move. He's just on the ground and he would not move. And I'm screaming at him and I'm going, there's blokes going to come to me if you don't get up and kick me the ball right now. He kicks the ball away and I see him run straight off the ground and I was like, oh no, <laughs> Jagger's done his shoulder or something? The opposition obviously saw the blood come out of my arm and it was quite heavy um, and, and called to the umpire to say blood rule. So before the umpire could even blow his whistle, I just ran off the ground and went down to the rooms and tried to get it strapped and we didn't really know what to do with it because it was quite a big wound. Like I just need to get back out there. I don't care if, how much pain this is going to be or what's going to happen. So I just got the, the trainer to wrap strapping tape around the open wound and just said, just make sure it's all covered and not bleeding. Come back to the bench and I'm watching Jarry out there just struggling. That's Austin Wanamiri, the ex-Melbourne player, racking up touches. Jarry was meant to be manning up on him. So after I've seen Checkers go to the bench, he's probably on the bench for five, six, seven minutes. And he had about as much impact on the bench as I had on the field because I couldn't get near it. So the reality of the game was it was physical and it was fast and it was hard. I was running around as if I'd never played the game of footy before. I was, I was allergic to the footy and maybe it was because it was really physical and I was scared. Um, in positive news though, we were kicking goals. We were hitting the scoreboard. The boys were putting goals on. Jarrah wasn't contributing. I was on the bench not contributing, but the rest of the boys were, were pulling their finger out. They were kicking a few snags early and I was busting to get out there and join in on the action. I get on the field, I finally get on the field, okay? So I've had a kick 30 seconds of the game, obviously busting my shoulder, and straight away find the ball within like 10 seconds of being on the field. He's gonna go down the line, here we go, he gets oh. the crowd out, he whips the barrel out. And in true Div 12 Resi style, of course, just kick the big torp down the line. I think I turned it over from memory, but kick the torp, I go into the ruck a couple seconds later, win a hit out, I'm like, geez. I've had a touch in the first 30 seconds, obviously gone off, come back on, had a talk, winning hit outs, I'm taking the ball out of the ruck. Is this NTFL actually that hard? Everyone's saying it's hard, but I'm fine in the footy. I'm actually like, this is just like playing Div 12 Resis. And I vividly remember at quarter time looking up at the big screen, and they were playing my highlights in slow-mo. They were playing me taking it out of the ruck, which is my trademark move in slow-mo on the, on the scoreboard. And I was like, I, I'm okay with this. And I'm watching Jared, and I'm like, please get into the game, man. You, you haven't touched the footy in the first quarter. I'm really hoping he starts to get his hands on it. Second quarter, I, I said, no, nah, I, I need to get my hands on the footy. There was, a, uh, there was a moment in the game where I felt comfortable. And I was like, all right, I'm in the game now. Because the whole first quarter, I hadn't touched the footy. I didn't get near it. I didn't touch it. I, I didn't have any body contact for the first 20 minutes. And I was a little bit lost on how to play the game. And once I got into it, I started to really get into it. Now, I don't want to say it myself, but a lot of the comments were, ha ha ha, Jarrah, you tricked me with your highlights package. This isn't you, this is Nick Dacos. Or, Jarrah there, good uh, pressure. Uh, great pressure so by Jarrah. Ha ha ha, this is, this is Kitty Coleman in the grand final. Davis here taking the kick in. In quarter. Here he goes, he runs. And just Jarrah sends it out long. Look. No, I, 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 I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. And, no, let's play and on. Jarrah. Jarrah, three oh. disposals in two minutes. 
Some people were saying it. Some people were saying this guy's Nick Dacos or... He gets it now, Jared. Great run off the half back. Maybe Nick Dacos taught him how to play or... I, I, I'm Seriously, I'm not saying it. He's gone. He's, he's going to send it. He sends oh, it down. Like, he, it's he, a he, short he, target to Maurice. Stay, they are. I'm just repeating it. Great oh, good. spoil there. Jared's got, Jared. to, Jared's got to get a nice gamble out wide. Gives it to him and Jared's Jared, got racked up again. I think that's his ninth disposal of the game. AFL clubs better be watching this game because look at number 11, Jared Davis. All right, and he kicks it long. Mid-season draft, he's getting picked up. So Jared's been cleaning up. I've been on the bench. I finally got on. I'm like, I want to get stuck in. All right, I want to get my hands on the pill. He's had 15 touches in four minutes. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm winning hit outs. I'm getting my hands on the footy. I'm even uh, having a bit of fun with the man on the mark here. Can he put him in front? Just before the halftime break. Let's check it. Checkers is going at him. Checkers is going at him. Checkers is going. And then I got a steep reality check. Maybe I was having a little bit too much fun. And I got punched in the face behind the play. And I just lost my call. Cool. It was a real mental lapse here. And I've obviously given away a free kick, being silly, retaliating. And if, uh, if things went, went against me, I could have been a lot of strife. You know, I had, the opposition could have got stuck into me. The crowd could have got stuck into me. So I was just very lucky that the halftime siren blew and I got off the field and, and got to cool down a little bit and get my head back in the game. So it's halftime. I'm absolutely smacking down the lollies. Cheggers is smashing down icy poles. And we're still well and truly in this game. A, a good third quarter, a good premiership quarter. And we're in it. I feel like I'm well and truly in the game. I had a really good second quarter. I felt comfortable. I'm like, this is where we can really take over the game. I feel like we've got some fresh legs. We're feeling good. Checks and I have been running all summer. We can run out this game. We can get our team on our back, take us to the promised land. We got a really harsh reality check here because this quarter was rough. I was playing full back and the ball kept getting kicked over my head through the big sticks, which is not what you want. Um, I think they kicked about six or seven unanswered goals. We couldn't get near it. Checkers is stuck on the bench, and I'm just I'm, I'm spectating at this point. I, I'm, I'm not near it. The team's not near it. It's clearance goal, clearance goal, clearance goal at this point. And Jarrah can't find the footy. He gets his hands on it for the first time with just a couple minutes to go in the quarter. And then I come on. I think there's about five minutes left, and I get given a free kick, and I absolutely butcher it. I turn it over. I'm looking for Jarrah, and I spray the kick and just kick it straight to Austin Wanamiri. Before we knew it, we were down 50-odd points in a quarter. It was mental. In, in my head, I was like, we've probably, we're probably given up our chance to win this game. I don't think we can come back that far, um, especially the way the ball was so slippery. It's pretty hard to kick goals, and we, we were blown out of the game a little bit. It's, it's a demoralizing situation to be in when you feel like you're in the game and, and now you're just not. So our mindset, our mindset shifted to... Let's have fun. Let's enjoy the last 20 minutes of, of time that we have. And we kick into gear. The last quarter, we kick into gear. Raf is on fire. Raf Clark is just clunking them. He sparks us. We start kicking snags. I think we kicked two or three snags real early. It was truly all about just having as much fun as we possibly could. Jarrah's straight arming blokes like Dusty Martin. And just compare this to our third quarter. Like, it's just unheard of. I honestly... We played the worst third quarter of all time. In the fourth quarter, we come out like flag favourites. I finally get on the field, okay? There's about 12 minutes left in the game, and I know I don't want to leave anything on the park. I want to get on that plane tomorrow absolutely gassed. I want to be hurting. I want to be sore. Um, so I'm just going hard. I'm running hard, and within seconds, I get to lay this smother or tackle or whatever you want to call it. I'm in the play. Checkers is right in the thick of it. I'm just... I'm talking to my opponents. I'm talking to my teammates. Soaking in the atmosphere, soaking in the experience. Just, yeah, I guess just enjoying the time that we had. I just wanted to make sure we left it all in the park. I didn't want to leave, die wondering. I didn't want to head back to Melbourne and be like, I didn't give that my best shot. So I'm running around. I'm trying to get it into the, into the play as much as I can. I was playing at centre-half four, but I remember I was running up the field trying to take ruck contests, trying to get it in the, in the play. I was, I was playing as a midfielder at one point and trying to win centre clearances. So... Um, it was a lot of fun. I got back in the ruck in the last few moments of the game. Took one more out of the ruck, which is my signature move. Uh, don't mind doing that move. I'm sure my midfielders hate it. But uh, look, we fought back a little bit. We still lost by 30-odd points. But we uh, we showed a bit of heart in the last quarter. And obviously, Jabiru are topside on the ladder. And, and they were going to be hard to beat. But 
I mean, it wasn't the greatest game. There was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of yin-yang moments, a lot of good and bad, but still a lot of fun. So much fun out there. Sweaty times, hot times, but a lot of fun. A good first hit out for my first game since basically eight, nine months ago, which is, uh, yeah, good. Basically, the whole weekend was a blast. Shoulder was pretty cooked. Um, and I probably didn't get as much game time because of that shoulder as I expected. And got a little bit of the footy, but not as much as we were hoping for. But either way, it's just good to get a bit of footy back in the, in the system. Um, I think I'm already planning to go back up. I think, listen, I love playing cricket. Cricket's fun, sure. I love hitting runs. But if I had the choice between playing cricket this at the end of this footy season or potentially living in Darwin for three, four months, coming back for Christmas and New Year's and all that sort of stuff, but playing footy over the summer up in Darwin, I think that'd be not only a really cool experience, I think that'd be just like really, really fun. Um, Darwin was great. The footy was great. The club is awesome. So I would, uh, I'd, I'd love to go back for a little while and play some good footy and have a bit of fun. And there's some people at the club who were massive and helped us out. So like Nate um, Paredes, who's the captain of the, the the Premier team, and Jade Ponter, who just helped us so much with helping out with the flights and making sure we were we were all in the right places at the right time. So um, the club was so welcoming and just getting back into a footy club that sort of probably missed out a little bit. Um, and it's no offense to cricket, but footy clubs are quite big organizations so the cricket team you've only got 11 people in the team and they can vary and footy clubs we're talking they had at the all club training 200 people on the training track and that's 200 people who are very passionate about football which is something i'm also passionate about so just having so many like-minded people around to bounce off and hang out with and chat to meeting lots of new blokes who just love footy as much as we do was pretty cool and yeah learning all about the history of the club was also something just blew my mind so keen to get back there and not cook my shoulder next time and hopefully play a good game and hopefully win a game. Pretty cool that we got to go up and do it as well, just considering how shit we are at footy, but can you get back up there next season?